Hello, I'm Stuart A. Swordlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swordlow. And this is the Expansions News Podcast for the February, second week of February 2013. And we just have a few things to tell you today. Uh, first off, uh, of course, as many of you know and have experienced, here in the United States there was a huge blizzard that struck the eastern part of the United States and particularly the New England area. Now, I just wanted to say that they hyped up this storm, making it uh, you know, revolutionary, the worst ever going to be in history. But you know what? It was just this, we've had worse ones. And I'm surprised they didn't name it. They've been naming all these storms. Well, they did name it. Oh, they did name yes, it. Yes, this one was Nemo. Huh? And, uh, of course, when we left for our trip, when we had that uh, winter storm here, it was Draco. And now there's one uh, coming across the northern plains uh, called Orco. So Draco, Nemo, Orco, the <laughs> what is that all about? They never used to name storms like this before in the winter. Yes, they named hurricanes, but they never named uh, winter storms. And of course, these strange names, Draco, the reptilian energy, Nemo, the character from the uh, movie, mm-hmm. and now Orco, which I know I've seen in some science fiction thing. So there's obviously some imprinting going on uh, with these names and... Uh, you know, when we lived on the East Coast, uh, we had those snowstorms all, you know, every winter there'd be one or two. So, and this one, yes, there were some significant accumulations, but nothing that would be, uh, you know, outrageous compared to the nothing past. Nothing abnormal, so to speak. No, but they're just hyping it up and there's a reason they're doing that. And that's because of the weather manipulation. They're trying to promote uh, global warming and that the storms are caused by this, that, and the other thing. Uh, and, and yes, they, they are agitating the atmosphere with their electronic equipment, but uh, certainly, uh, my opinion, this storm was no different than all the other storms we used to have in the past. I agree. Next thing that's coming up, uh, that big hype, is the horse meat that's been found in the UK and other parts of Europe. Now, as you know, uh, horse meat is uh, kind of normal in Europe. I and mean, when I was in Switzerland, I was asked if I wanted horse meat. Uh, and now in the U.S., it's legal to, to sell horse meat. So why are they making a big deal? I guess it wasn't labeled as such. Um, but the idea of eating a horse meat, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Um, but I guess there's really nothing wrong with it. But they're normalizing it. That's why this is in front of mm-hmm. you now. Because they're putting it... Well, a lot of people in the, in the U.S. don't realize that people in the U.K. or Europe would eat it as a normal course anyway. So now they're putting it out there so that when they bring it forward in the U.S., it's not going to seem so abnormal, obviously. Well, now when you say, I'm so hungry, I can eat a horse, you, <laughs> you can. can. <laughs> so I guess maybe that's why they did it, just yeah, so it fits the expression. Yeah. The other thing is, uh, now this is interesting, um, that the Harvard-Smithsonian Institute, which I didn't even know there was such a mm-hmm. thing, says that there's four and a half billion Earth-like planets in our galaxy. And there may even be an Earth-like planet that's 10 billion years old, which would mean it's twice the age of this planet, which means maybe there are civilizations billions of years ahead. Well, we know this already. Like I mentioned, every week there's another story about asteroids, comets, uh, strange planets, all these kinds of things. And that's because, my opinion, second half of this year, we're going to see something about the staged alien invasion. But the interesting thing is, too, is remember, it wasn't that long ago where they said there were no Earth-like planets. And then there'd be one here, one there, now we have a billion. So that's a really vast leap, and that's what we've been telling you all along, that they're moving you along where you will forget when there was a time when there weren't any Earth-like planets. But they started printing you bit by bit. Well, and related to that, my personal research lately has been on the Tunguska event from 1908 where a large object entered into the Earth's atmosphere and exploded over central Siberia. It uh, left or it knocked down 80 million trees in a pattern that goes out circularly from uh, the explosion point. But the interesting thing is no crater was left. There are no pieces of any object that uh, we know of. Uh, There have been many Soviet expeditions starting in 1927, even going into recent times uh, of uh, exploration. They could never find a crater. They could never find an object or remnants of an object. 
But I'm reading uh, information from the Ukrainian uh, scientist, a former Soviet scientist who's a friend of ours on Facebook. And uh, in his information, and he's studied it for quite a number of decades, apparently they have noticed that there was radiation levels higher in that area. Uh, the local native people said they found little silvery pieces of something. Um, and uh, also, they had found uh, remnants of what they call uh, earth elements, uh, which are only found after nuclear explosions. Uh, now, even though 80 million trees were knocked down, there was a central portion right underneath where the object exploded, where the trees were left standing. They call them tele telegraph pole trees because they're just standing straight up with no, no leaves or branches on them. And that means that whatever exploded did not hit the ground. It exploded in the air, uh, uh, maybe as much as uh, several, uh, well, 15,000 kilometers up or something like this. It was uh, very high up. Uh, it left a concussion wave that was felt like a five-point uh, earthquake Richter scale. Uh, it created something in the atmosphere that allowed light to shine at night from Western Europe all the way across Asia. You could read a book at night, even two o'clock in the morning. So, uh, the, the consensus is now it might have been an alien nuclear-powered ship that somehow exploded. Um, why it did, how it did, uh, that remains to be seen, but I just wanted to say that's something I'm investigating uh, right now. You know, I think all this is interesting because really, the things that are going on, on in the earth right now, on, in, around, above, below, all of this is tying right into our April seminar, which is Alienated in an Alien Nation, Living Without Fear. So our April seminar is always our healing seminar, and we're going to tie in some of this information. So if you're interested in aliens, or if you think you're an alien, or you're interested in your alien origins, then you definitely want to be at our April seminar, which is already selling. If you want to have a seat, you want to get your tickets ASAP. We have an early bird special on. I don't think that's on for much longer. Check the website. But anyway, alienated in an alien nation living without fear. So another amazing seminar, which will tie a lot of this in for you. And I have a couple stories, not so many, but I'm going to give you a couple of them. Speaking of things that blow up, 16 stories, have you heard this one? 16 stories below Grand Central Terminal in, in, New, York. in New York, they are actually blasting through bedrock to create a new commuter rail concourse with more floor space than New Orleans Superdome. And it says it's just one of three audacious projects going on beneath New York City streets to expand what's already the nation's biggest mass transit mm -hmm. system. One of three. Well, now, the other two are. I don't know. But anyway, it sounds huge. And it makes me think about if that they wanted a place for people to go to be safe during some kind of an attack of some kind, where would they put people where they'd be safe? They could put them mm -hmm. down into these bunkers. So they may be saying that it's part of the rail system, and perhaps it is, but we know that under the earth is going to be safer at some point than on top. But you know what? I don't think that they would care about saving people. Well, so there must be maybe something else going on. They need their worker force. So they may not be able to save everybody, but there are going to be some people who are going to make it down here, and those are going to be the survivors. Those are going to walk mm -hmm. on top of everybody else most likely to get there. All right, then... The next thing, of course, we can't do a, a, a podcast anymore without poop. So, we now have a bacteria that scientists say poops out gold. I want some of that. Me too. It's called a microbial magician named, and this is too long for me to say, Cupria vitis metallidernis. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. When placed in a mini lab full of gold chloride, which is a nasty toxin, they say, it gobbles up the poison, and in about a week, they process out of it 24 karat nuggets of gold. Wow. Well, that was interesting. So since I'm bringing up the poop stuff, what I want to remind you of is this. Many of the stories that I talked to you about are about the animal mind, which a lot of people don't even realize that they have them, which is centered in the solar plexus and ties into your higher mind at the solar plexus. This month... February. I am working in the member blog on February financial flow and I am explaining to you 
how the global handlers tie up your own personal financial flow into your animal mind and that is why you have a real challenge getting your finances up and going. So there's a lot of stuff that we do on the member side which we cannot do on the public side because the public isn't ready for it. Those of you who are ready for it, get your membership. Get in there and get in on this because this is good stuff. People are learning and they're untying things. And that's why the Illuminati ties you into your animal mind because all of your life gets tied up right there, including your finances. Okay, I've already mentioned in April, we have coming up our conference, Alienated and Alien Nation. But before that happens, in March, you are going to be on the road again. It's actually the end of February. Okay. And I'll be headed to Liverpool uh, to do the Planet X uh, radio conference, which would March, uh, I'll get there the end of February, but the conference is March 2nd and 3rd. Um, so you can go online and look that up. And you'll be available for personal consultations, consultations while you're there. Yes, yes, and uh, then I'll be heading on to uh, Italy and Iceland. Iceland and a and whole now bunch are, of places. Are you going to have, are you going to do anything in Iceland or are you already booked up there? Well, I might be booked up there already, but I'm actually meeting with some very high level people about other things. So sure. that's the main reason I'm going. All right, but you will have some consultation time. So I'm not sure if there is any space available yet left because no. that goes fast in Iceland mm -hmm. always. So yes. anyway, check the website. And then of course in June, remember Hidden History, Bosnia. Pyramids. If you're interested in pyramids, if you're interested in unraveling your own hidden ancient history, this is the place to be. So again, go online, expansions.com, and check out our Bosnia trip because yeah. we have some pre-trips, which I think is just about filled. We have some post-trip, which we're still working on airline tickets and dates. And so dates. I'm working on the Siberian end of it, and I should know in a few days, and I'll have yeah. that great. And we'll get that uh, information available to those of you who have already asked. Mm. So, anyway, there's always lots of stuff going on at expansions.com. We're never dull and boring. And, uh, this no, I'm is, not anyway. <laughs> this, is a, this is a way for you to perk up your life. There's no mm -hmm. point in wishing. It's time for action, right? Yeah, I'm going to get a handful of that gold pooping microbes. <laughs> I want to get some of that stuff. Well, well but apparently yeah. you also need a mini lab full of gold chloride, the mm -hmm. na nasty toxin. I don't know where that comes mm -hmm. from. So, Probably from some restaurants you can get. Probably. Yeah. Be sure and check out our Facebooks because we do post uh, news items there that we don't have here. Yeah. Membership side, of course, we post a lot of stuff we don't have on the front side. So anyway, we want to thank you for joining us. Yeah, and uh, those of you digging out, uh, be careful. Uh, have some vodka afterwards, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.